I've heard this from so many respected sources uh, that I, I believe it is true, but I want to kind of see things for myself and I want to do the experiment and kind of see if we can visualize it in a real world situation. Hey there, YouTube Gardeners. I'm pretty excited about today's experiment. Um, I've been wanting to do this experiment for a while, but it's taken me a while to get the supplies that I wanted to really fully il illustrate what uh, concept I'm trying to get figured out here. So it's a, a common practice to put pebbles in the bottom of your potted plants. And the idea is that it aids in draining. It's a practice that's been around since probably the beginning of potted plants. But I would say recently in the last handful of years, it's kind of come to light that that's not exactly what happens. So Apparently the pebbles that are in the bottom of the pot, where they interface with the potting soil, causes what's called a perched water table. And that just means the water that you've poured into water your plant is sitting up on top of the pebbles instead of draining down through. The reason why this happens is because water, if you look at it at a molecular chemistry level, it has uh, electrical charges, kind of like a magnet that hold itself together. It's called surface tension. And if you fill a cup of water, all the way to the rim, you can see how the water actually sits above the rim of the glass. That's because the surface tension and the, the charges on the water are holding the water together instead of letting it just spill out over. The scientists and the respected gardening experts are saying that the interface where the soil and the pebbles meet each other, since they're different particle sizes, that it causes this, the surface tension properties of the water to hold itself there instead of draining down through the pebbles. So. I've heard this from so many respected sources uh, that I, I believe it is true, but I want to kind of see things for myself and I want to do the experiment and kind of see if we can visualize it in a real world, real world situation. And so I'm, again, I'm excited for this experiment. I finally got a clear, tall vase and we're going to do this experiment and see what happens. All right, for starters, I've got this mixture of potting soil here. It's all mixed. I'm going to be using the same soil for each pot so we can have kind of a fair playing field, if you will. And I've got this kitchen scale here that I'm gonna to use to see about getting the same amount of potting soil in each one of these pots. They are the same size pot. Obviously this one has some pebbles in the bottom. Use this as my scoop and weighing container. All right, we'll start off with five ounces. I'm gonna put five ounces in there. Okay, got five ounces in there. Gonna need more than that, so I'm gonna do another five ounces in each one. And then finally, five ounces in there. So clearly, they filled up to different heights in the pot. That's because this one has rocks in the bottom and there will be um, uh, potentially some absorption of water into the rocks. So hopefully the rocks won't hold too much water in this experiment. So my thoughts are, I'm going to put exactly one cup of water in each one of them and see how much water comes out the bottom. This is the one with no pebbles in the bottom. This is the one with pebbles in the bottom. I'm going to give that just a minute or two to drain and we'll see what happens. All right, so it's been about two minutes. They don't really seem to be doing much more than a drip here or there. To me, the one on the right with pebbles looks like it's drained a little bit more water than the one on the left. Uh, it was a, or an evenly moist potting mix. This one had rocks, which I expected to soak up a little extra. So this is go kind of going opposite of what the experts are saying. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm just, I wanted to see this for myself and apparently it's not working out like I thought. But just had a th thought perhaps now that the potting soil is saturated, Maybe things will be different. So I'm going to add one more cup of water to each one and see if there's any difference. Give that a minute to drain. All right, so those have both had a little bit to drain. Um, in my opinion, they're both spot on at one cup of collected fluid. I don't know. This is inconclusive, obviously, but uh, this isn't a perfectly pure scientific experiment. It's just something I wanted to do for fun. I'm sure there's lots of variabilities. Just a few that come to mind are this potting soil is fresh. It hasn't been watered and dried and watered and dried multiple times. Uh, there's different pot sizes, different, different shapes of pots, gravel sizes. 
different temperatures, different buildup of microbial life in the soils that might have something to do with it. There's so many factors. I don't know that there's a way we can completely prove that this is happening, other than I'm, I do have trust in this gardening experts and, science, and scientists who have uh, previously reported on this, but this has turned me into more of a skeptic than I thought. Bottom line is, if you put gravel in your pots and you've never had issues, then this new idea and understanding, whether it's 100% accurate or not, uh, doesn't matter if, if your potted plants are working and growing correctly. I don't know, this might be kind of controversial if you ask me, because uh, I, I have trusted a lot of these books that I've read and a lot of these gardening experts, but this does not seem to be what I thought it was going to be. This is part of science, so part of a scientific experiment, but I did not do it perfectly. I totally admit that. There's so many things I didn't take into account. This is something I just wanted to do for fun, and I thought it would be an obvious thing. All right, here's the clear pot that I was talking about. It's steamed up a little bit, but I think when I pour the water in, it'll kind of rinse off some of that condensation inside. Hopefully we'll be able to see it a little bit better. So what I fully expect to happen, according to the experts, is that we'll pour the water in where this pebble drainage and potting soil interfaces at. I expect to see some water start to collect here and maybe even raise up and have the water table be higher up than we would imagine instead of hitting here and draining faster like we've always thought, like common practice has been for so many years. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some water in here and let's see if we can see what happens. Looks like it's draining even faster when it hits the rocks. Me. Really, it's draining through the bottom. Let it drain for a minute here and see, and start to see some more air spaces showing up. See if we can see any spot where it looks like the water is pulling up on top of the rocks or not. It looked to me like when the water hit the rocks that it moved quicker. It almost, my imagination looks like there could be some water pulling up starting about right here. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time to drain, see if it makes any difference. Turn it around, see if anything looks different on the other sides. It does not appear to me that there's any sort of perched water table whatsoever. On this side, in fact, it looks very even. This side, it does look like there's a little, little bit of a darker spot from here down, but I don't know, it's very subjective. Maybe the scientists have a way of measuring the soil moisture versus here, or here versus here. I don't know, it's, you got me. I really thought this would be more definitive. I do not have any reason to say that you should not put rocks in based on what we showed here today. Okay, so I'm gonna put some more water in. Probably watch it again when it hits that interface between the potting soil and the rocks. Yeah, it looks to me like it speeds up as soon as it hits the rocks, it drops down instead of oozing down. Well, as I already said, if, if I were going by what we did here today, and I had to make a decision if I wanted to put rocks in the bottom of my pots to aid in drainage or not, I would probably put rocks in the bottom. 